I think one of the things that makes uh, Asia Pacific region different um, from dealing business with, with everywhere else in the oil and gas business is it's a lot of it is based on personal relationships and people like to do business with people they, they see and trust and, and, and get to know. But every region has its own geopolitical exploration and, and production. I suppose personality would be the phrase that you would use. Um, so anybody coming into a market is going to have to get to know and understand that personality before they can start to do business. Um, pretty much, you know, that, that would be what I would say. In terms of technologies being developed, you see, of course, it's FLNG that's very big in the region now. And this region is actually spearheading it. It's, it's, not being, it's not been done in the US or Europe previously. So that's one very big technological development. Another one is shale. Uh, although you usually associate um, shale to the US, CBM has been around in this region for some time already, even before the whole shale rush started. Uh, Indonesia has been very active, so has, so has Australia. And uh, I think that's this shale gas or CBM, as otherwise known, can, has the potential to be a big ch game changer and the technologies they are developing, like horizontal drilling and all, I, I think that's really cutting edge and it has actually shown the Asian region to not be a follower but a leader. So, yeah, these two strike my mind. Yeah. If uh, manufacturing uh, takes a downturn, I don't think so the shipyard will uh, uh, consolidate up into uh, to repairs and uh, maintenance. They already have orders for a few years before that. I mean, they'll just carry on the orders, but however, maintenance and repairs are still uh, is an ongoing business.